welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. My name is Kizzy, if you didn't know, and I talk about books on this channel. <laughs> so it is currently Tuesday, which means I forgot to film yesterday. Got away from me. Where did we leave off last week? I had just finished the bone season and I rated it four stars. I then read The Pale Dreamer, which is the prequel to the series. It was published after the second book, I think, in the series was published, but it came within my edition of The Bone Season. So that's why I read it. And I'm not gonna lie, I am a little bit addicted. So last week I read The Ninth Season by N.K. Jemisin and I read The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. Both seasons, both seasons in the title, thematic. And whilst I rated the ninth season a five star rating, I did. it was a lower five star read, it's not like my absolute favorite book in the world, but I did think it was really good and I really want to continue with this series. However, I for some reason am just feeling a little bit addicted to the bone season. Like I feel like last week's vlog I was a bit negative when I was editing, I was like, this vlog doesn't really show actually my enjoyment of this book, I feel like I was overly critical of it, but I did, I like, I don't know, I don't know if it's just like the kind of YA feel that it has with the characters, but I'm really actually invested in what is happening to them and I really wanna see what's going on. I wanna see how they're going. I'm just addicted to these characters. I just wanna read these characters and I wanna continue with the series. I did actually put in my basket online the rest of the bone season that's out. So there's currently three more books to be read I think it's gonna be like a seven or eight book series, I don't actually know, but I think it's got quite a few more to come out. And then I also put in the books for the bone season, no, for the ninth season, which there's still two more in that trilogy to go. And it was like nearly, nearly 60 quid, 50, 60 quid. So I didn't purchase it, but I'm really tempted to buy them. And I don't know, I can't afford to buy both of them at the moment. So I don't know what to do, I'm torn. So whilst I make up my mind about which books I want to buy, I am going to read the classic that is on my TBR for this month, and that is The Master and Margartia. I still don't know how to pronounce it. Someone on my vlog did comment the correct pronunciation, but I still can't do it, so Margartia. This is a Russian classic published in 1966, I believe, but it was actually completed much earlier about that than that, but because it has... It's a satire of the Soviet Union. It wasn't allowed to be published until much later than it was written. So a lot of his plays and things were actually banned during the Soviet Union when he was writing them. I am about 60 pages in and it is, it is strange. So I'm currently there. It is strange. There is a lot of illusions like um, trippiness and um, with people seeing things that aren't there. This follows Soviet Union, Russia, and it also goes back to, it has two timelines, it goes back to ancient Jerusalem and follows the storyline there, which we've seen one chapter from so far. And I feel like I'm not very up to date or knowledgeable on kind of history as a whole, Russian history especially, I'm not very well knowledge with that. And the kind of origins and the Bible, I don't really, I can't remember any of the stuff that I learned from school. So if you are more well known with that, I feel like maybe you get a little bit more out of this than I have. I've spent a lot of time flicking to the back to like see what the notes say because I didn't really understand the references, but I am actually quite enjoying it. The writing is quite weird and trippy, but it is also quite funny. So I'm enjoying that. Did I say that the devil is involved? The devil basically comes to Moscow and plays havoc and has a big cat as well, which we've had a glimpse of, but not really much from. Leo, talking of the cat. Here he is, <laughs> looking grumpy as ever. Say hello. But yes, so I think the cat will be interesting. He's like really big and he tried to get on a bus or a train, like a tram, and he actually tried to pay. So he's like a little human, but a cat. So I'm intrigued by that. I wanna see more of the cat. I don't, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about this. It's just a bit weird at the moment, but I quite enjoy it. So I'll keep you updated on that. It's only 400 pages, so I'm hoping to finish this like midway through this week and also start another book. But again, I don't know what that is because I want to continue with the series. I don't want to start a new series until I've done that. So I don't know what to do. Maybe I'll continue with Brandon Sanderson, but I'm not going to lie. I just want to read the bone season. So I might have to order some books. I don't know, I can't afford to though. Oh, the troubles of being 
a book lover. <laughs> we have such a tough life. Okay, so yes, I have a seminar now, which is the boring seminar of the week. So I'm gonna go waste two hours of my life and then I'll catch up with you once I read a bit more of this book and decided what I'm gonna do about the other books. book people <laughs> so it is currently friday and i know i think i've only talked to you once this week but it's because this week has been a bit of a struggle i think the lockdown 3.0 slug has officially arrived and i'm just not feeling doing anything <laughs> and getting motivation to do stuff has been a struggle this week and that includes reading so i have only read i'm on page 73 now so i don't know I think I was only, I was like on page 60 last time I spoke to you, so I've literally read very little. And I did try and read last night, but I had a really bad headache, and I thought it had gone this morning, but I've just sat down and it started to like come back again across here. So that's not very fun. But yeah, I don't know, I'm just feeling like all I want to do is go into a bookstore, browse some books, pick up a massive pile of books, then carry them around like they're my child, around the rest of the bookstore, then put all the books back because I realise I'm not a millionaire and I can't buy all these books, but then still buy like one or two and be really happy with the two that I've bought and then come home and be really excited and read those two books and have a jolly old good time. That's just what I want to do now. I want to go into a bookstore. <laughs> I'm really, en I am enjoying this. Like it's not, I don't think that's making me go into a reading slump. I think potentially because I want to be reading something else that could be a factor I always say if you want to read something read it like don't push yourself to read something else read what you want to read that's the best way not to ever get into a reading slump because if you're reading stuff that you think you should be reading it's never gonna work <laughs> so whilst I'm really enjoying this I do just want to be reading the bone season or the fifth season the next book and that so but I still don't have them I haven't ordered them I've been strong I'm regretting it I feel like I should have ordered them Who's that? You always look so grumpy on the vlogs now. You got a smile. You got a smile. So, oh, are you okay? You just fell off. Um, now you're taking this focus from me. I thought like this is a really bad reading vlog because I've not done any reading. I'm gonna try and get my head in the game though. These next two days, next three days, it's Friday. So it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Try and read a hundred or so pages of this a day and um, that's my goal and obviously the reading reading mojo has not been there so I haven't done that and hopefully I will finish this one for you and have a little bit of content for you in this reading vlog but sometimes you do just have those days you do just have those weeks you can't beat yourself up about them um you can only try and move forward and improve next time bit of soft good moment there for you <laughs> I'm gonna go try read. Oh, I need to go and get some soil for my plants. I got new plant pots because a gremlin broke my plant pot. Um, he was chasing the flies that come out of them, which he's not allowed to do because he then breaks the plants because um, he swipes at them and now they've got those claw marks in them. Now he's too big that when he sits on them or like tries to push off and jump, they just tipped over and smashed. So that was fun. The goal for today, replant the plots. We plant the pots. I'll see you then. <laughs>
Monday, so this is the last check-in of the vlog. I'm a day late, but that's because I literally had nothing to tell you yesterday, and I felt like this was much like such a like useless reading vlog. But I have actually done some reading. I have some updates for you. So I have not read much of this book. It's a weird thing. I'm enjoying it. I'm on page 84, so I am slowly, <laughs> slowly making my way through it. But I don't know. There's just something not like concentration-wise. I think the beginning has a lot of contextual knowledge that you need to know about the Soviet Union. Every chapter seems to follow a different person. There is a general storyline, like very general storyline that kind of is in the background of each one. But so far, I don't think we've had like a repeated point of view, like an obviously repeated point of view. Sorry if you can hear the cat meowing downstairs. So I think that was also kind of struggling. I'm struggling to get used to that, but I do really like the writing style. I think it is actually quite funny. It's quite playful and I, I do think I will enjoy it once I get used to it. So it might take me like a couple couple more times just forcing myself to read it and get into the story for me to enjoy it but I do plan on continuing this next week and then because I don't have an audiobook at the moment that I was listening to I'm I just finished rereading Emily Wilson's Odyssey on it because I'm doing it and I didn't want to read it again like physically so I did listen to the audiobook of that I had one credit on my audible account that I've been saving and I didn't know what to use it for but I found, I'm very picky with my audiobooks, you might know this, I talk about it all the time, <laughs> but I'm very picky with my audiobooks, it has to have a good narrator, otherwise I just can't get into it. It normally has to be a story that I'm used to, especially if it's a fantasy, so with characters that I already know, or like a series continuation, that kind of thing, just because I do struggle with paying attention to audiobooks, um, especially if I'm doing something else, I tend to, like, my mind wanders quite a lot, so I don't have very good concentration for that kind of thing, but... My favourite audiobook narrator of all time is Stephen Fry. His voice is just made for audiobooks, I swear. And I think that maybe stems back to kind of nostalgia reasons because he was the narrator of the Harry Potter series, which I kind of grew up listening to and going to bed to. So nostalgic, yes, he is, he's got points for me there. But he also just has such a great voice, like audiobooks they're just so incredible and he also narrates his own books of heroes and mythos and i think he must do troy as well but i haven't listened to that one but mythos and heroes are great so i would recommend listening to that as well i did have to read those ones first though because it's quite it's a lot of information but he narrates the entire sherlock holmes collection on audiobook on audible so i bought that it's like 76 hours long one credit it was normally like 69 pounds i think but with audible credit obviously it's well not free you pay like what 8.99 a month for one credit so 69 pound for 8.99 and he narrates it it's only on audible as well so it has a study in scarlet and a foreword from the stephen fry himself and then it has a sign of four the adventures of sherlock holmes the memoirs of Sherlock Holmes, don't know why I said that so weirdly, <laughs> The Hound of Baskervilles, and The Return of Sherlock Holmes, The Valley of Fear, His Last Blow, Bow, not Blow, <laughs> don't need to know about that, um, The Case Book of Sherlock Holmes, and that's the end. So it has all of them in it, and I've never read them before, so this is a new experience. I listened to it whilst making dinner last night, and I could actually follow along with it, and he tells it just so well, like he even has like you can tell he's kind of having fun doing it, like with the voices, and he just gets into character. So incredible. I would recommend, especially because you get so much money for your worth. And it's the kind of book that I think if I read it, I wouldn't get the kind of humour from it that he puts into it. Um, that I think is meant to be in there. I'm just not very good at like reading those things, especially if it's a slightly older text. I think it's from the Victorian period. Could be wrong there, but I think I'm right. So I'm not very good at picking up those things. So I think a definitely audiobook helps with his narration it's just an absolute dream <laughs> and then because i was like you know what i'm just not feeling this book i really do want to get some reading done and actually have something to talk to you about oh that's another thing i caved guys <laughs> i caved and i bought the entire rest of the bone season that is out including the new release and the rest of ninth season it was quite expensive it was a lot of money, but I had a gift 
I had a book token gift card that I was saving that I got for Christmas and I was saving to go and do like a book shopping video where I go and I buy all these books because I prefer buying books in the stores anyway than ordering them online um just 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 the feeling of buying books and carrying books and this you've got this massive book and then taking them put them, you know I just I just like it so I was saving to do like a read a vlog of me buying loads of books um going around bookstores and stuff like that obviously that's not going to happen anytime soon I was either going to do it in New York I thought that would be nice I'm going to still do it just maybe the haul won't be quite as big as I was going to have it I'll save up though it'll still be an epic video don't worry so I was, was going to do one in York and then I was also going to do one in London when I'm back home so that was exciting but I decided you know what I can't not live my life because it's in lockdown and I cheered myself up a lot and I decided to order them all and they've been dispatched so they are on their way so that is exciting so that will be my continuation for next week but whilst I was waiting now that I've ordered them I feel like you know I feel in a better mindset to read it's really weird but I decided to read Edge Dancer which is the short story one of the short stories in Arcanium Unbound which is a collection of short stories in the Cosmere and um, so Brennan Sanderson's Cosmere is made up of Elantris and Warbreaker, which are both standalones. The Final Empire or um, Mistborn series, there's two trilogies within them. There's the first arc and the second arc. And then the Stormlight Archive, which is a big, massive series. And to continue on from book two to book three in the Stormlight Archive, it is recommended that you read Edge Dancer because that happens in between those. And I think it... I don't know if it has relevance for the next book because from the foreword, postscript even, um, Balasan's just saying that the character in this called Lyft will be a bigger part later on. Um, she's not quite there yet. So I'm sad about that because I actually really liked her. I thought this was really funny and I'm not going to lie. I actually slightly enjoyed it more than the main storyline so far. Um, she was just really funny and happy and just like there was so much humour and little things in it that I just really enjoyed so if you haven't read it I would really recommend it I feel like she could maybe annoy a lot of people she's a little kid and she has a lot of little kid observations she's very kind of full of herself and confident in her own abilities but also like not like she does go through a lot of development in this quite a lot of it is like a mask or kind of like a front that she's putting on um and I thought just for 100 pages it was like 110 pages or something like that like Brian Sanderson got a lot in there and it was a jolly old good time and I really enjoyed it. So I gave it, I'm gonna give it five stars. I don't know if I can rate it individually on Goodreads, but I'm hoping I can, because I haven't read any of the rest in this book. Um, I do plan to, because I do think I can now, because they're all from books or about books and series that I've already read. So yes, that follows Lyft, who has a very, very small part in the second book, The Words of Radiant. I enjoyed it, I would recommend, and it was a fun time i read it quite fast and for someone that hasn't been reading like this entire week it was a good time so yes that's the end of the vlog i hope you enjoyed it i hope it hasn't been too boring i feel like it has been really boring um thank you for i don't know liking the video if you liked it <laughs> and commenting on what books you read this month or what you thought of these books if you've read the Master and Margarcia, Arcanium Unbound, any of those things. Sherlock Holmes, if you've read Sherlock Holmes, I feel like a lot of people probably have, but I would definitely recommend the audiobook if you can. If you have a spare credit line around, it's definitely worth it, I would say. I mean, I've only listened to like three chapters, but I can promise it's gonna be great. <laughs> Thank you again for watching. My voice is breaking now, so I'm gonna go and edit this video so you can see it tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>